From the outset, Israel has faced threats of complete annihilation. It had to engage in several wars that were imposed on it. Since the 1950s to the present day, Israel has taken many steps to protect itself and is now considered to be one of the most powerful countries in the world. Israel is widely believed to have been the sixth country in the world to develop nuclear weapons. It's reported that Israel had rudimentary but deliverable nuclear weapons available as early as 1967. The most important weapons platform of Israel today is the Dolphin-class submarines designed for nuke delivery. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why, because of one weapon, no enemies of Israel can touch it. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Israel is not a party to the NPT or Non-Proliferation Treaty. Israel engages in strategic ambiguity, saying it would not be the first country to introduce nuclear weapons into the region but refusing to otherwise confirm or deny a nuclear weapons program or arsenal. This policy of nuclear opacity has been interpreted as an attempt to get the benefits of deterrence with a minimum political cost. In 1968, the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Yitzhak Rabin, affirmed to the United States State Department that Israel would not be the first to introduce nuclear weapons into the Middle East. Upon further questioning about what introduce meant in this context, however, he said that he would not consider a weapon that had not been tested a weapon, and affirmed that he did not believe that an unadvertised, untested nuclear device was really a nuclear weapon. There's extensive evidence Israel has nuclear weapons or a near-ready nuclear weapons capability, but there's also speculation that Israel may have tested a nuclear weapon along with South Africa in 1979. But this has not been confirmed, and interpretation of the Vela incident is controversial. The Vela incident, also known as the South Atlantic Flash, was an unidentified double flash of light detected by the American Vela Hotel satellite on September 22, 1979, near the Prince Edward Islands off Antarctica, which many believe was of nuclear origin. The most widespread theory among those who believe the flash was of nuclear origin is that it resulted from a joint South African and Israeli nuclear test. The topic remains highly disputed and most of the information about the event remains classified. In 1986, a former Demona technician, Mordecai Venunu, disclosed extensive information about the nuclear program to the British press, including photographs of the secret areas of the nuclear site some of which depicted nuclear weapons, cores, and designs. Venunu gave detailed descriptions of lithium-6 separation required for the production of tritium, an essential ingredient of fusion-boosted fission bombs, as well as information about the rate of plutonium production. Venunu's evidence was vetted by experienced technical experts before publication and is considered to be among the strongest evidence for the advanced state of the Israeli nuclear weapons program. On the 12th of February 2015, the Pentagon declassified a top-secret 386-page Department of Defense document from 1987, detailing Israel's nuclear program. This represents the first time that Israel's nuclear program has ever been officially and publicly referenced by the U.S. authorities. The Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, or SIPRI, estimates that Israel has approximately 80 intact nuclear weapons, 
of which 50 are for delivery by Jericho 2 medium range ballistic missiles and 30 are gravity bombs for delivery by aircraft. The exact numbers are disputed, but most defense observers believe it's in the range of 80 to 120. Cipri also reports that there were renewed speculation in 2012 that Israel may also have developed nuclear capable submarine launched cruise missiles. This means Israel has functional nuclear triad, the ability to deliver nukes from land, air, and sea. For the sea-based delivery, ballistic missile submarines are the go-to option. Ballistic missile submarines are generally nuclear-powered and carry long-range nuclear-tipped missiles, also known as SLBM, or submarine-launched ballistic missiles. Nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines are considered to be the most potent weapon developed by mankind, and they're the most survivable part of the nuclear triad. There are reasons for it. A surprise preemptive strike might wipe out a country's land-based missiles and nuclear bombers, but it's very difficult to track and take out a ballistic missile submarine patrolling quietly in the depths of the ocean. Since they can't be taken out by first strike and can retaliate against an enemy with SLBMs, no sane adversary will attack a country that possesses a nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine armed with SLBMs. Nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines are very complex and costly to develop and maintain. This is why the US, Russia, UK, France, China, and India are currently the only countries to field a nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine. Israel's taken a different approach to field its sea-based second strike capability and is using the German-built Dolphin-class conventional submarine for this purpose. The first three submarines were authorized in 1988. Dolphin, Leviathan, and Tacoma were laid down in the early 1990s and entered service between 1999 and 2000. These submarines are 187 feet long, displace 1,720 tons submerged, and have an operating depth of 1,148 feet. Each of these subs has 10 torpedo tubes in the bow six standard 533 mm tubes and four larger 650 mm torpedo tubes. The larger torpedo tubes are more than two feet wide, and these tubes are reportedly being used to deploy long-range nuclear-tip missiles. It's to be noted that a second set of Dolphin submarines, Dolphin II, was ordered in the mid-2000s. Dolphin II is an incremental upgrade of original Dolphin and the main difference is the inclusion of the Air Independent Propulsion AIP, system. AIP allows the subs of this class to operate underwater for longer periods of time, and some reports suggest that Dolphin II can stay submerged for up to 18 days at a time. In the year 2000, the U.S. Navy observed a missile launch from off the coast of Sri Lanka that traveled an estimated 932 miles, or around 1,500 kilometers. The missile was speculated to be an upgraded Popeye missile. Popeye was originally an air-launched ground attack missile. It was developed in 1985 and was capable of delivering 750 pounds or 340 kilogram warhead to ranges of up to 45 miles or 78 kilometers. It's interesting to note that the United States Air Force bought 154 Popeye missiles to arm B-52 bombers for conventional attacks, renaming them the AGM-142 Raptor. The Popeye is powered by a single-stage solid rocket. The 2000 test is thought to be of Popeye Turbo, which is powered by a turbofan engine so that it can travel for long distances. But some accounts dispute this and point to Gabriel anti-ship missile. Though the exact nature of the weapon is not clear, there is a consensus among strategic analysts that Israel has deployed long-range nuclear-tipped land-attack missiles from its Dolphin-class submarines. Israel is acquiring a second set of three Dolphin II submarines. These will replace the three original Dolphin subs, so essentially Israel will have six Dolphin II subs. 
This means that Israel's sea-based nuclear deterrent will be active for the foreseeable future, and its second strike capability will be intact. So traditional Middle East rivals of Israel are in the strike range of Israel's sea-based nukes. Any of these countries trying to attack Israel with a preemptive strike will have to face nuclear retaliation. So it can be said that it will be a suicidal step for Israel's rival if they decide to wage a war against it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.